And at the bottom, probably familiar to anybody that's taken fundamentals here, it, uh, we're always looking at the usability of the equipment, right? Uh, that it be minimalist, efficient, and expandable, and, and easily replicable, and easily we can train someone to use it and go in. The, the kind of the toolkit that Jared was talking about earlier of, you know, we're going on this dive, these are the tools we need, put them in our pocket, and off we go. And I think what we found, and what really surprises me, and, and I love, I can't deny the pleasure in this, is uh, the fact that on any one dive, we're doing five pretty sophisticated tasks at any one time, collecting data and coming back with good data pretty much every time. Um, so, how we find cenotes. You know, back then, and there's a saying, you know, not knowing it was impossible, they went ahead and did it anyway. And there's another way of saying that is they were just young and stupid and they did it anyway. And I think at the beginning it was a, a combination of those two things, right? And we just didn't know. There was, a, you know, we're talking the early 1990s, GPS was still kind of nascent and not really accurate. Uh, Google Earth didn't exist. Uh, we had compass, aerial photographs, topographic maps, and a basic GPS. And at the very outset, this is a picture of Bill Phillips standing next to the highway in Tulum. And we would just aimlessly wander in the jungle, <laughs> hoping that we would find a cenote. And, and uh, obviously, we, we quickly learned that that wasn't a very efficient way of doing things. So we looked for innovative ways to do that. And Gary and Kay Walton, you know, here's one of the things they passed on to Bill and me was, just the fact that aerial photographs and topographic maps of that area existed. And, but what we had to do was combine them and put onion skin paper over the, topographic uh, over the aerial photographs to get real solid features mapped. And then we'd put the, the grid lines from the, the UTM coordinates from topographic maps on top of that, and we'd come up with theoretical waypoints of where cenotes might be. And then we'd hike out in the jungle. And, and so slowly we, we, we began to adapt and and innovate and, and evolve in this. Fast forward to today, and we can use satellite data. Uh, we have a fleet of drones now that we use for mapping. The drone, of course, any of you that have been to the Yucatan Peninsula know it's flat as a pancake. So having that periscopic vision to get up above the jungle canopy and move around and look and find cenotes that way, still kind of uh, luck involved. Uh, but it helps gives us some perspective. Uh, satellite imagery here, we can, we can use different filters to show moisture content and vegetation that allows cenotes to pop up. And so we can get coordinates and, and locations from that. And just last year, we started using uh, a LIDAR. And so this is, uh, there's a NASA mission that went over the Oshbel Ha Cave system in 2013. Uh, in, in conjunction with the, the National Forest Service of Mexico looking at carbon sequestration, but there are these great random swaths of LIDAR all over the peninsula, and one of them just happens to go over Oshbel Ha. And uh, just to give you an idea of the, the accuracy of this, this is Jose Luis Hernandez, who is our, our stalwart helper in the field, and he's standing in a hole that we detected using LIDAR in the middle of the jungle. And so for about two seconds, we're like, this is cheating. And then we're like, no, this is awesome. And so it's, it's, like, it's like having x-ray vision. And so in our future plans, we're probably going to get our own drone with LIDAR capability and be able to really start to scour the jungle. Not only that, in that same, you know, we found two cenotes on that hike, not to mention several Maya structures as well sticking up out of the, the, the relief of the, the jungle floor. Um, so logistics has absolutely changed over the year. There's, there's one thing, two things that have remained constant though. One is that humans are essential <laughs> in any of the logistics with brain power and muscle power. Uh, and the other thing that's remained in, throughout these whole years is we still have a lot of equipment. Even with the advent of rebreathers and the use of rebreathers uh, to minimize the amount of equipment that we take, we still have a lot of heavy equipment. And so over the years, um, you know, learning from Mike Madden and Nohoch Nachich, uh, we employed a family in our early days in Oshbelha uh, to transport all of our equipment by horseback. We had to cut the trails. You know, we, 
we bought two chainsaws, a compressor, and a horse uh, for our first project, and maybe a little bit of dive equipment as well. And slowly, as I mentioned earlier, we set up these satellite base camps in the jungle and uh, would just go out and for two to three weeks at a time and try to expand the cave as much as we possibly could. Slowly, roads got to put in, and so we were able to access the cenotes by road. Uh, with the advent of using the RB80s, we began to do projects without compressors. Uh, so we'd just take a whole bunch of tanks in and, and just dive as much as we could until we ran out of gas at the surface, not underwater. Uh, that's Chris making a phone call from the top of a tree. Uh, that was our phone booth. Uh, on one occasion, we used a helicopter, uh, just kind of as a proof of concept to, uh, to take gear back into the jungle. Uh, and where we are today is it's, it's a double-edged sword in that the development of the area around Tulum is, is going at a fairly brisk pace. And as that happens, more and more roads are getting put in uh, into what were previously very remote areas. And uh, now we basically um, are strategically identifying cenotes uh, by their placement next to roads, much in the way that old explorers used to do it as well. This is Don Celiano, who uh, this is original video from May of 1999. We showed up at the side of the road with all of our gear. He showed up at the side of the road with six horses. And within 45 minutes, all of our stuff, two and a half tons of equipment was marching into the jungle and not one piece of it ever was broken. Um, but we still have, again, this is uh, Julian and Andreas uh, Russell one of the cenotes they've been diving out of. You know, we still maintain a high level of physical fitness. Don't worry, uh, very important. Uh, but we also have access to these roads going out into the jungle and so we strategically identify cenotes close to them uh, in order to continue with the expansion. 